Stone. Let's hear it. Hello, everybody. All right, Manchester. So I was on Canal Street this afternoon with the other gays. Yes, do what we do best with an afternoon off work. Just sat outside McTucky Fried Chicken judging people. But I tell you what, um, last year was a good year for the gays. I don't know whether you know, but Beauty and the Beast featured Disney's first openly gay character. Yes, I don't believe that though, do you? No, no. Ursula from The Little Mermaid was clearly a great big dyke, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, that bitch definitely liked to play flick and lick under the sea, didn't she? <laughs> Dirty mare. And possibly even that snake from the Jungle Book. Do you remember with a really bad lisp? He was probably a gay too, wasn't he? And then we had the news, the very shocking and surprising news took us all by surprise that Barry Manilow is actually still alive. <laughs> Fuck me. And my local Indian takeaway got taken over by a gay. It's called Papa Don Preach. <laughs> I didn't actually ever come out to my mum and dad as a gay. They just kind of presumed where my mum found my poppers in my school bag when I was 12 years old. So she asked me what they were for and I panicked and said they're for cleaning CDs with mum. Come home from school the next day to find my mum off her face in the living room. Fucking poppers in one hand, J-cloth in the other. She says, what the hell is this? It's ruined the Lighthouse family CD and your dad's passed out upstairs. And it looks like we've got another year with Theresa May, doesn't it, everybody? I know, I know, but listen, I don't know how us as a nation could just sit back and let our country be run by a woman with nostrils that big. <laughs> Have you all seen them? Have you? If you've not, let me tell you, I wouldn't want to share a gram of coke with that fucking bitch. <laughs> Just celebrated my anniversary. Me and my boyfriend have been together now for nine years, everybody. Thank you, thank you, but we've had the clap before. <laughs> you know what it's like being a modern gay. You get invited around to a friend's house to watch Sex in the City, and before you know it, everyone's lubing up and bearing down. <laughs> I'm only joking. I fucking hate Sex in the City. But nine years is a long time, isn't it? And things change, don't they, don't they? Yes. Just like your relationship gets with your favourite dildo or vibrator, madam. After nine years, you don't want to play with it anymore, do you? After 43 years, then you don't want to play with it either, do you? You just want to prop it up in the living room, watch Titanic with it. Hmm? Yeah, so they say you have to kiss a lot of frogs, don't they, before you find your prince. What they don't tell you is most of those frogs carry syphilis. I don't live in Manchester anymore, I live in London now. So you know what that means, don't you? I just come back up north on bank holidays just to look down on my own family. <laughs> I live in a nice area of London. I don't know whether you've heard of it. I live in Chelsea. Woo! Oh, indeed. It's very fucking posh in Chelsea, everybody. Even my local ketamine dealer wears chinos and a cravat. All the men in Chelsea, they all wear the same coloured chinos as well. You know that colour that you can only really describe as hearing aid beige? <laughs> I don't want to say that I've become a snob since I moved to London, but I was on Market Street today in Primark. Saw this girl I recognised from time ago. Proper Mancunian scally she was, do you know what I mean? Covered in bling, bangles, tassels, great big hoop earrings. Looked like she just covered herself in glue and run a muck in Claire's accessories. I didn't want to speak to her. I didn't want to speak to her. I'm avoiding her. I'm trying to get away from her. And then I could smell her, everybody. I could smell her because she's wearing that new fragrance by Kerry Katona. It's called scum. Anyway, then I think I've avoided her. I think I've escaped her. Then I see her in the corner of my eye, just as she finished detagging her shoplifting. She went, I love... I love 
love you all right. I've not seen you for ages. Where have you been? I said, hi, love. I've moved to London to become a London gay. I've not seen you for nine years. I remember the last time I saw you because you're wearing the same top. <laughs> then I went to a cafe for a traditional Manchester breakfast. Oh, I wish I'd not bothered. Two Pop-Tarts, a couple of Mellow Birds and Tan Lambert, so was given. I complained. I said, excuse me, I live in London now. Do you want to pop some avocado on top of that, please? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Table next to us called the waitress over. She said, excuse me, I'm celiac. She said, nice to meet you, celiac. My name's Leslie. See, guys, I've got to go now. I've only got a short spot tonight. But before I go, me and my boyfriend have just got a dog together. Yes, he's a little gluten-free shih tzu. Anyway, the vet did advise us, being a small dog, we should get his balls chopped off at an early age for health reasons. We've had it done, not for health reasons, though, just to be trendy. Yeah. Now we can take him to parties and tell everyone not only is he gluten-free, but he's also gender-neutral. Thank you very much. Good evening. Let's hear it for Russell.